Welcome to My English Voice. So today we're talking about letters, writing and receiving letters. If you haven't watched the video already, go and do that now and download the worksheet for free at myenglishvoice.com. Then come back here and watch this answer key video. So what about the discussion question? The question is about the types of texts that you write and also whether you like to write letters. I probably write more emails, I have to admit. Probably like you, I write emails and messages. Um, but I do love getting letters and I try to send postcards when I go on holiday. Um, I also love getting Christmas cards from friends and my sister is really good at sending cards to say thank you or to say happy birthday. And I like to keep all my letters and cards in a special place. These are all my private photos and letters and I keep them all in here. And so for example, this was a letter from Spain. And I love it when you can see the stamp from the country as well. I think that's really special. Um, but yeah, I think most people don't send many letters nowadays. How about you? Put your answer in the comments box below. So what about the pronunciation? Remember there are three things to think about for clear communication with international English. The first thing are the consonant sounds. And I thought that these nearly all sounded clear to me. There was just one sound, the t in letter, which I thought sounded like a d sound, like letter. But this is probably an influence from North America. This is really common in North American accents. The second thing to notice is the vowel length, long and short vowel sounds. For some French speakers, um, there can be not much difference between the long and the short sounds. But I thought on this video that he did make a difference between these sounds. The third thing is sentence stress. So stressing the most important words in your message by making them higher, louder and longer. And I thought he used this really effectively. I also thought he used pauses and that he wasn't actually speaking too quickly, so I thought this helped to make his message really clear. So what about other French speakers of English? One thing that you might sometimes notice is the H sound is sometimes deleted. So for example, happy can sound like happy, but we didn't hear this on this video. Another thing that you might notice is the ch sound can sound like sh, so church can sound like church, and j can sound like j, so joke can sound like joke. I mentioned about length before with vowel length. Um, this can also cause problems for French speakers of English. For example, a word like leave with e can sound like live, it, which is a short sound. Um, so if you hear a word that you don't understand from a French speaker, maybe think about the vowel in it and think if it's longer, does it sound like another word that you do recognize? And this could help you. Remember that there might be other pronunciation features that sound different on the video compared to your speaking, but different does not always mean better or worse. And it doesn't mean that you can't understand someone. Research suggests that the th sounds like the and th can sound many different ways around the world like z or f or s and people can still understand each other. The most important thing is keeping it the same and then this means your listener can use their active ears and switch the switch in their mind. Okay, so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also sign up for the newsletter to get updates of new lessons on Thursdays and Saturdays. And there are so many different categories of lessons that hopefully you'll find something you're really interested in. For example, we have sports, mind, body and soul, film, music, food, technology. And if you have any other suggestions, please do get in touch. 
Remember, this is your community. Share your English voice with my English voice. Thank you.